CGTN's live stream. I'm Sim Sim and this is... My name's Liu Yang. Hello, CGTN viewers. Hi, and we are here at a press conference today of the uh, two sessions. Mm -hmm. And today the press conference is going to be about poverty alleviation. So right. a very, very big topic, a huge mm -hmm. priority for the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. And uh, Premier Li Keqiang the other day in the uh, government work report said 68 million people have been lifted out of poverty over the last five years, mm -hmm. but there are still 30 million to go. So mm -hmm. that's something they're going to be discussing today. Mm -hmm. uh, what still needs to be done, right? Mm -hmm. And I also will add one thing, and he also, in the government work report, he mentioned about that this year in 2018, 10 million more will be lifted out of poverty. I think that's a huge number. How are we going to achieve that? Mm -hmm. You know, given the fact that many areas stayed in the poverty for probably many, many decades. For example, people live in the remote area, live in the mountainous area, for the people living in the southwestern area, you know, for them to come out from the village, they probably just, uh, you know, drive one day and stay in a hotel for a night and then drive another day and then arrive the capital city of, of their provinces, right? So I think one of the questions is the infrastructure. Mm. I, if I get a chance, I would like to ask Mr. Liu Yongfu and how are we going to improve the infrastructures in the remote area? What about you? Um, I think I would like to know what's happening after, um, in, the, in the next few years actually, because um, Mr. Right. Liu Yongfu, who is yeah. the uh, head of the State Poverty Alleviation Bureau, mm -hmm. he said in the past that you know the last 30 million to be lifted out of poverty, that, those are the hardest to, 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 to help, because mm -hmm. these, these are the people who, who the government has not been able to help so far, maybe people who are uh, handicapped or people who are disabled or in very remote areas. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I am interested in, in, in sort of getting to know. But you are based in Sichuan yes. and you have been to some of these very I've been remote to many places areas. In the yeah. Southwestern area, as you know, and you also been to Sichuan province and Southwestern region, mm. right? And I think one of the problems in Southwestern region, I think the government they try their best, right? They give the you know investment, they give the means, the ways, the approaches to help them to help many villages who are in the poverty area, tell them, you know, if you want to get rich, you know, you must to learn more skills, you must to think about how are you going to do, right? Not just to stay in a home and receive the money from the government. I think that's one of the important things to do is we need to give them more training mm. and give them more education and widen their ideas, right? And how are they going to get rich? How are they going to get rid of the poverty? Mm. And I think one of the questions I want to ask, if I get a chance, um, so should the government add NGOs okay. to help the poverty alleviation? I think that's one of the important questions because we have we are a huge country, 1.3 billion people. And um, if everybody contributes one thing, I think to accomplish the 2020 goal, that's I think that shouldn't be the problem. And also, the mission must be accomplished as as you know, just a month ago, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping was in Sichuan province and visited many remote areas. And one of the areas is um, Liangshan Yi Autonomous Prefecture of Sichuan province. And people were crying. People were just saying that, you know, we see the hope. We see we will get rid of the poverty. Mm. Yeah. yeah, because that's something huge. I mean, it's not just that China is trying to help people out of poverty. Yeah. It wants to eradicate extreme poverty exactly. completely, completely by 2020. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the centenary goals, which is achieving a moderately prosperous society by 2020. So it's not just, oh, we're going to get the job half done. Yeah. They want to get it completely done. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge, huge thing to do and a big, big priority for the, for the government for over the last few years. And they've poured a lot of money into it. But it's not just subsidies and job creation, which you would expect maybe exactly. is not the only way of getting people out of poverty. Like you said, infrastructure is very, very important. It's connecting remote regions to uh, other more developed other more urban, urban areas. Urban areas. Right. And then also improving education so that kids actually get access to schools, um, improving, you know, uh, tourism, uh, bringing tourism to remote areas and so that they bring economy. And villages, right? Exactly. And many, many villagers, they are, you know, they're doing e-commerce. They have their agricultural products. Mm. They want to sell to the outside the world. And, and probably just, even just in China, that we have a lot of customers in the country. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah e-commerce is a big thing in China. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's another thing. And then it's also part of, of the goals over the next few years is also to bring internet access to everybody in the country. And that will mm -hmm. definitely help connect people mm -hmm. as well, even in remote regions. Mm -hmm. One thing I thought was very interesting in Premier Li Keqiang's uh, work report the other day was also, they said they've moved, I 
think 8.3 million people from in inhospitable areas. So people uh, areas that are maybe hit by natural disasters, where people are maybe right. more likely to also be impoverished. They've moved them to other areas. Your that's point the whole. On. Sorry, yeah. that's just the population of my own country. So it's wow. it's huge, and that's just yeah. a small population uh, part of the population here well, in China. Well, I think you're right on. And I just, I just want to add one thing mm. before the pre press conference to start. And you know, just to prior, as I said, President Xi Jinping was in Sichuan province. Mm, right, right, right. And that's actually the, the leader of this country send a very clear message to the people around the world that China will accomplish this mission mm. and it must be accomplished. So what about but what about after twenty twenty? What about the year after that, right? Many policies have already been implemented. And what about policies after that? What about the people who are still living in the bad conditions? Although they're probably, their annual income has already, will be above the poverty, the national poverty line. And, but, you know, many countries has the many people who are still living in the, in the bad areas, right? Uh, bad conditions. Mm. And also I think it is very important for people to know uh, the country will invest more in the extreme poverty yeah. area. That's very important. Yeah, because that's true. I mean, eradicating extreme poverty is one thing, but it doesn't mean these people will suddenly be driving around in Porsches or having, you know, they, they will still be low income. They're still going to yeah, there's always room for improvement, so that will be an interesting thing because yeah. the the leaders who are, will be elected at this, these two sessions yeah. are not going to be just overseeing the country for the next two years, but the next five years. So that's beyond the centenary goal. What happens yeah, after and 2020? And I also, sorry, cut you off. I also want to add a very important thing: is this year not only 10 million people, right, around the 10 million people, but we think that 2.8 million people will be moved from a hospitable oh, area. Okay. So they're just, you know, as the urbanization progressing, you know, that's the help for them, right? That's their hope to reach the goal. Yeah, absolutely. And their life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's everybody wants to. Well, I think for everybody, director, right? The director <laughs> telling me. Um, the press oh. conference is about to Yes, they're start. just walking in. So we're going to yeah, leave it here in, and so you can yeah. uh, hear then what stay the uh, tuned. Stay tuned. poverty alleviation press conference has to okay. say. Okay. Stay tuned. You. Bye. Please uh, come back to your seats. Dear friends from the media, good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference for the first session of the 13th National People's Congress. Today's press conference will talk about how to win the battle of poverty alleviation through a targeted approach. Today, we are very honored to have with us Mr. Liu Wong, Food Director of the State Council Leading Group Office of Poverty Alleviation and Development, to answer your questions on this particular topic. Now, some opening remarks from Mr. Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very pleased to meet the friends from the press. You may know that at the 18th CPC National Congress, it was proposed that we have to control major risks and achieve the battle against poverty alleviation through a targeted approach and prevent pollution. Earlier this year, President Xi Jinping visited Sichuan province. He visited Liangshan and some impoverished 
uh, localities to uh, conduct inspections into the circumstances of the local people. In Sichuan and in Chengdu city, Sichuan province, he chaired a conference on how to win the battle against poverty alleviation through a targeted approach. President Xi summarized the experience of our achievements since the 18th National Congress and made important arrangements for the uh, implementation of poverty alleviation since the 19th National Congress. At the opening session of the two sessions uh, on March the 5th, Premier Li Keqiang also made important uh, arrangements and remarks regarding how to uh, conduct the work on the above-mentioned uh, three fronts. This is an uh, issue that has drawn attention from all walks of life, people from the society, including journalists in the room, have been involved in this important work of poverty alleviation. On behalf of the State Council Leading Group Office of Poverty Alleviation and Development, I would like to pay my tribute and say thank you to all of you. Now, I would like to take your questions on poverty alleviation and the relevant uh, issues. Thank you. Thank you, Director Liu. Now the floor is open for questions. With uh, China Daily, the government work report says that decisive progress in poverty alleviation has been achieved in the last five years. Uh, could you elaborate on this judgment? And in 2018, what will be done to lock in the results of uh, previous years and to fulfill the goals for this year? Since the 18th CPC National Congress, uh, we have embarked on a five-year journey on poverty alleviation. In 2015, we launched our battle against poverty alleviation, and it's been two years since the launch of the work. So what have we achieved in the past several years, and what problems do we face? What are we going to do going forward? So these are highly um, uh, important questions of your concern, and I'm ready to take your questions. Um, according to the leadership of President Xi Jinping, um, we have been working very hard to fight against poverty, and uh, important achievements have been made along the way. There are some important indicators. Specifically, first, in the history of poverty alleviation in China, we have achieved the best results. In 2015, we had 99.98 million uh, people living in uh, poverty. By the end of 2017, it has been reduced to uh, 34 million. So in five years, we have reduced people living in poverty by 65 million. It's around uh, 10 million per year. By 2020, we will continue to reduce poverty by uh, 7 million. So there are different standards engaging the achievements. However, uh, the results have been uh, doubled every year. From 1986, when we set the poverty standard to uh, the end of 2000, uh, Twelve, we had 832 uh, poor villages and counties. In 2017, we will continue to reduce uh, poor villages and counties by around 200. 
That is to say, we have reduced poor villages and counties by 150. Of course, as the standards increase, uh, there will be more uh, poor villages and counties. In 2016, the total number of poor villages and counties have been reduced for the first time. The income of people living in rural areas has also increased uh, significantly um, more than 2.5 percentage points than the national average. So this is quite unprecedented. Secondly, we have accelerated the development in the impoverished regions. Through important inputs and commitments, we have improved infrastructure and public services in the poor regions. Living standards and uh, uh, production conditions in the poor regions have also significantly improved. In addition, through uh, increasing uh, the income of the people in the local regions, we have promoted the development of the distinct uh, industries and uh, sectors in these poor regions. Moreover, through um, planned migration, uh, uh, forestry uh, planning and other efforts, we have significantly improved the ecological conditions in these regions. Thirdly, we have fostered synergy across the society to fight against poverty. Fourthly, we have carved out a new approach to fight against poverty with Chinese characteristics. So these are the important highlights of our poverty alleviation work, and this uh, testifies to the decisions and the uh, correct arrangements of the State Council and the Central Government, which are based on the national circumstances of the country. So these are what we have done in the past. You also asked about the future work. Uh, actually, important arrangements have been made in the 19th CPC National Congress and the, at the, uh, in the uh, work report on the government uh, this year. There are also important plans. So based on experiences, we will continue to stick to the uh, objectives and uh, principles. We will remain committed to the institutional arrangements in fighting against poverty. We will stick to the targeted approach to poverty alleviation. And based on these important principles and purposes, we will improve the institutions and mechanisms and policies and revamp the relevant policies to step up poverty alleviation in the impoverished regions. We will also shift our style of work and enhance the training for relevant professionals and local people. And these will make sure that the battle against poverty will be won. We will not only secure a victory, but also secure a decisive and a good victory. And we have confidence in this uh, our victory. Thank you. My question is, some of the poverty reduction has been due to international collaboration, also exports being sold from poorer regions such as Guizhou. So in relation to this, to what extent do you think that the Belt and Road Initiative can or should be combined with poverty alleviation? Could China's anti-poverty efforts have a global reach? Thank you very much. Thank you. Wishing Yes, they can be integrated. The Belt and the Road Initiative 
is to promote the world, the relevant countries in the world to develop in a common prospect. Through this initiative, we can promote the international economic and the social development. As we all know, in the developed countries, employment and uh, social security, social welfare are the priority to lift out the poverty. Uh, especially in developing countries, we should rely on development and also the poverty alleviation system and mechanisms. In this regard, the Belt and Road Initiative can promote different countries' economic growth and can benefit the poverty alleviation. Against this backdrop, we will conduct cooperation in the poverty alleviation. Thank you. <笑>不好意思 习近平总书记在今年春节前到四川梁山州调研了深度贫困问题，还在成都主持召开了打好精准脱贫攻坚战座谈会。那么，我想请问一下，下一步中央对深度贫困地区的脱贫攻坚工作有什么具体的安排和
regions, you can see the number is as high as 11 percent. So for these regions, we still have to step up our work and increase our input and fight against poverty through a decisive way. Based on the arrangements of the Central Committee and Central Government, for Tibet, Xinjiang, and those uh, Tibetan ethnic regions, Liangshan Prefecture in Sichuan Province, Lingxia in Gansu Province, and uh, Luxian in Yunnan uh, Province. These are designated as national level extreme poverty areas, and the special support will be extended to these regions among the 334 regions and over 16,000 counties. Different governments at different levels have to increase their input and support to these regions. For one thing, we have to set a timetable or roadmap for poverty alleviation, including specific measures and projects. By the end of last year, and this work has basically been uh, uh, completed. Secondly, the central government and the sub-national governments, particularly provincial governments, have to step up support. Uh, for instance, the eastern region has to support western region, particularly impoverished regions. Newly increased financial resources have to be put into these uh, extreme poverty areas and regions. Besides, we have to improve our monitoring of the poverty uh, uh, situations. For those uh, regions where poverty incidence is above 18 percent or 20 percent, we have to improve monitoring at different levels to identify the weak links of our, our work. For those uh, regions where the uh, poverty alleviation is likely to be um, uh, not completed, we have to strengthen our work. With Guoming Daily at the 12th February meeting chaired by General Secretary Xi Jinping, he, he said that we should win the battle against poverty with flying colors. In the past, we see the wording was win the battle against poverty. Uh, what significance do you see in the addition of the phrase with flying colors? And he raised eight points at the meeting. Uh, among them, which one do you think is the most challenging to implement? For this question, to better win or just to win the battle against uh, poverty alleviation has different meanings. To win the battle with the flying colors has more content. To win it just to accomplish the task. The task is by the year of 2020 under the current uh, standards all the po impoverished people should be left out of poverty and uh, to eradicate the extreme and direct uh, poverty situation in China's history and all the poverty stricken prefectures should be left out of poverty and uh, the regional poverty should also be removed. Just now I said as uh, this progress is going on during the past five years, we have uh, reduced uh, two-thirds of the po impoverished people. The poverty-stricken stricken counties are left for 681, and this year we will lift 
200 of them out of poverty, and we will leave 350 counties. So this won't be a big problem in future. But we need to win the battle with flying colors. What does this mean? First, we should comprehensively accomplish this task. We won't leave behind any person nor any county. We won't leave any that corner. And second, for this poverty eradication, we need to focus on the quality which can be examined by the time and history. There can be no fraud. There can be no number poverty affiliation. We need to guarantee the quality. Third, not only win the battle against poverty, after 2020, we will continue to conduct work on the poverty alleviation and to relieve the relatively poor areas. We mean by the year of 2020, we will, we will remove the extremely and relatively poor areas, but there will still be poorer areas, and we will continue working on this and uh, learn from the past experiences in order to establish a better mechanism to make the poverty alleviation sustainable. Your second question mentioned the eight points initiated by President Xi. I think all of them are very important and difficult. We need to take it carefully. Like the first one, that's to enhance the institutional leadership. We need to further enhance it. We need to expand the poverty alleviation space. We have the chief designer, that's the President Xi. He conducted the site visit, and uh, he's also involved in the process. This time, in the meeting chaired by President Xi in Chengdu, President Xi and uh, the leaders from provincial and uh, city level gathered to discuss how to win the targeted poverty alleviation. We have to uphold, we must uphold the leadership of the CPC Central Committee. This is the basis. Under the leadership of President Xi, we are convinced we can win this battle. And also, we need to focus on the extremely impoverished region. Also, at the grassroots level, the work of uh, the Central Committee should uh, abide by the regulation, also to enhance their capability and uh, improve their ideological mindset. And uh, for the impoverished people, they should be benefited from this. They should also contribute to this uh, poverty alleviation process. Above all, for these eight points, each one is very significant. We should turn these points into pragmatic practices. And uh, from the top level design, we should uh, work hard and we should prevent risks in the middle level and uh, in the end. In the final one kilometer, we should also keep working hard. Thank you. Uh 成为了降低我们国家这个贫困发生率的一个有效手段之一。我想请问刘永福主任，呃，在这个过程当中，就是扶贫搬迁的过程当中，怎么怎么样去化解这个成本比较高的问题？另外，在后续扶持还有这个防
Uh, in the government work report, Premier Li uh, said that decisive progress has may been made in poverty alleviation in the last five years, and he mentioned one specific figure, which is that uh, eight million plus people were relocated from inhospitable areas. Relocation has proved to be an effective means to reduce headcount ratio. So my question is, um, how do you think should we cope with the issue of heavy cost of relocation? And what should be done to uh, uh, ensure that follow-up support can be sustained and we can prevent the relapse into poverty again? Thank you. Well, this is a very important question, which has drawn widespread attention. At the NDRC press conference, this question was also raised, and I'm um, ready to take this question as well, because this is very important. Well, the government decided that during the 13th five-year plan period, we have to achieve 10 million people uh, who will be qualified for eradication and in the implementation process. There will be a certain number of people who will be relocated uh, as well. So the number will be much more than 10 million. It is, a, it, it is a massive project. This is a very hard nut to crack and it involves huge numbers of people and the project is absolutely enormous in terms of the input. For relocation in the poverty alleviation context, that means we will relocate those people living in, in hospital regions into a different a region or locality. Because living in these in hospital regions where the conditions are very harsh, uh, where, where water is scarce and the soil conditions are very bad, poverty alleviation would be futile. Uh, that's why we must relocate these people to a different region. Uh, more, more often than not, uh, there will only be uh, 10 or 20 households in these regions, and if you have to build roads and transport network, and the cost would be uh, very high. In some regions, the ecological system is very fragile, and the living in these regions also threatens the local environment. That's why relocation is a very complex um, process. You have to choose the correct site, where to relocate these people to, and you have to consider the willingness of these people, whether they are ready to relocate. In terms of the cost of relocation, the cost is indeed very high. So the per capita cost is around 60,000 RMB yuan. However, compared with the uh, conditions and circumstances, I think this is a reasonable price to pay. Otherwise, we shouldn't call it a battle against poverty. If these people live in these regions forever, that they would be living in extreme poverty forever. So the cost is a fair price to pay. The key in this process, after relocation, we have to make sure that people can settle down uh, properly in these regions. We have to properly deal with the life after relocation. Without proper post-relocation support, this wouldn't be sustainable. It would be just a change of location. So you have to make sure that there are relevant industries and businesses to be done in these uh, relocated regions. That's why we have to support the development of industries in these regions. So for the 60,000 
underground uh, support. Uh, some would be used for housing, and uh, another important part would be used for the development of relevant industries. So the uh, work in this region is uh, progressing smoothly, and we have the support of the relocated people. And most of them have already been lifted out of poverty after the relocation process. Uh 那我想请问刘主任，咱们扶贫办在今年的工作中围绕这个激发脱贫的内生动力上会有什么样的一些举措吗？呃，在这其中还有什么样的一些难点是需要攻坚的吗？谢谢。With the Hubei TV, the government work report this year vows to invigorate self-generated impetus to alleviate poverty, and actually the local governments have made positive attempts in the past years. Uh, for example, in my province, Hubei, uh, we have rolled out a scheme to attract funding, technology, and talent back into the rural areas. Uh, my question is, will your office take new measures this year uh, in this regard, and what do you think are the challenges uh, in this front? Thank you. This question is also a hot sport issue, and it's also the next step we should be focused on. The poverty has its thousands of history, and there are multiple reasons, like the inconvenient transport and the language barrier, and so on. The existed uh, impoverished people also lack inner power. The existence will bring some consciousness. This doesn't mean the impoverished people are lazy or are foolish due to the extreme weather and uh, lack of uh, transportation in history. They are not guaranteed that they have no access to public resources. They couldn't share the public resources and the development results with the other people. Due to the long-term poverty, they are afraid to imagine for future, and they are used to poverty. In this regard, we are working on the poverty alleviation. For different levels of uh, regions or governments, they have uh, good experiences. We will publicize these experiences. You and me are from the same province. Every provinces have their good experiences for others to draw from. And uh, next, uh, we will continue working hard. Our society should also be patient, and because the impoverished people are transforming. They are positively improving themselves, and they are also hoping for a better life. They are hope being to be respected and win dignity. So for the next, we will guide them from the perspective of policy, and uh, we will improve their consciousness in order to prevent laziness. And next, uh, we will conduct the trainings and the educational programs that's mainly for ideological education to transform their mindset in order to improve their techniques and skills so that they can also engage in the 
poverty alleviation. On the other hand, you mentioned the typical guidance. We should uh, set good examples and absorb the experiences from the better places in order to transform the ideological mindset because some impoverished people living in the mountains and they are afraid of uh, going down because they've been used to their life and they love th their hometown due to generations uh, living and uh, they are reluctant to go out from the mountain area. We are working hard to let them go out from the mountain area and go to the cities. And we should also help them eradicate the outdated formalities. On this process, we will guide them continuously. Like uh, there are several commissions in the villages to supervise uh, the luxury consumption. And these commissions are self-governed by the villagers. They should also conduct self-education. And through these commissions, we will have a good guidance to those villagers. Thank you. But我们在采访中也发现，就是有一些基层的扶贫的干部，就是作风不实，包括搞这个数字脱贫、虚假脱贫。请问您怎么看待这样的现象？下一步您将如何加大监督监管，确保我们的扶贫工作真正的公正、
So they have paid a dear price with their life in fighting against poverty. So we have to acknowledge their contribution. However, because of the weak foundation at the local level and the existence of some misconduct at the grassroots level in implementing the poverty alleviation work, uh, there will be some problems. And we have indeed identified some problems. We have been trying very hard to redress the problem. Generally speaking, the trend is good. But admittedly, and there are some problems we have to deal with. So in this process, we have to secure a decisive battle against poverty alleviation, including correcting some misconduct, deal with the falsification of numbers, mani manipulation of uh, poverty alleviation statistics, and corruption. We will absolutely deal with this and uh, punish these uh, people. Since the launch of the poverty alleviation work, we have investigated and dealt with a lot of cases numbering over 60,000, involving over 80,000 people. So we will give credit to those who have achieved great important work. We will uh, identify and redress the problems. For those who have involved in misconduct and manipulation of numbers, we will also re-educate them, we will guide them, and we will be very uh, resolute in punishing those uh, misbehaved uh, officials. Thank you. With Southern Metropolis, uh, t by the end of last year, a total of uh, 730 million RMB have been embezzled or misused in other ways. Uh, how do you look at this uh, figure and why? Uh, are these funds misused to such a great extent? Uh, what institutional measures will be in place to ensure that these funds are used more effectively and as intended? The material basis of poverty alleviation lies in money, and we need to manage it well. In the past, there was a lack of money. And since the battle against poverty alleviation, President Xi required, we should uh, improve the conditions of uh, poverty alleviation. So in recent years, we have added up in the capital and the fund for poverty alleviation. We had a fiscal fund in the year of uh, 2012. It was uh, less than 50 billion yuan. And last year, it totaled more than 200 billion yuan. So in total, it's uh, 300 billion yuan. We have a large, a huge amount of uh, poverty alleviation fund. And the second, the fund is issued from the central committee to prefecture level to s villages. As we have hundreds of uh, uh, poverty stricken counties and uh, hundreds of thousands of impoverished uh, villages. This is very extensive. So the fund issuing process should be complicated, and there will be problems lying. There are 
misappropriates or fraud or embezzling of the money. In the past, the Central Committee set very strict requirements on this. According to the projects and the programs, the distribution of the fund was very strict, which uh, showed uh, the low efficiency. And now we did some reform. We delegated the power to counties and the, the fund from the Central Committee after the approval of the National People's Congress within month, one month, it can be released to the province. And uh, within another one month, it can be released to the counties. And there will be another problem. At the local level, the grassroots level, some people are afraid of using money, and they don't know how to use the money in a better way. So we are working on strengthening and uh, issuing new policies. First, we give the fund, and then we should help manage and serve them in terms of using the fund. Our next step is to firstly expose the fiscal revenue to the public in terms of uh, central committee, provinces, and county level. And also for the villages, the fund for poverty alleviation and the projects will be exposed and will receive the supervision from the society. This will be a systematic mechanism. The poverty alleviation projects uh, will be exposed to public and receive social supervision. So people who are conducting fraud or misappropriates of the fund uh, will be supervised. We changed uh, to this system in order to further complete the system above uh, prefectural level. And uh, we set up database of uh, poverty alleviation, which identifies the items of uh, the poverty projects. And the projects will wait for the fund, but not vice versa. And this also helps solve the problems from the local levels for who are there, who are afraid of using money in the right way. And also, this process will receive the supervision from the public and the society. Even if we've initiated this, there are still some people who conduct frauding management or use the money in the wrong way. But we are very strict on this. We hope you can help oversight. On the other hand, not only cannot misuse this fund, we need to use it in a good way. So next, uh, we will organize three third party organizations to oversee the efficiency of this process to s supervise uh, the efficiency of the fund. We will have a performance uh, system and uh, to further complete this system. Thank you. Now, 
。那么，除了各地区自身的努力之外，国家在制定政策、投放资金的时候，对这部分地区会不会有所侧重呢？谢谢。With Inner Mongolia TV, in our country, the poor population tends to concentrate in old revolutionary base areas. Uh, areas with large ethnic minority populations and border areas, uh, like in Mongolia. And these areas are sometimes contiguous with extreme poverty. An illness or natural disaster could uh, easily throw those lifted out of poverty back into it. It is not easy to lock in the results of poverty alleviation. The local governments, of course, should make their own efforts, but does the central government uh, have any priorities given to these areas, for example, in terms of funding? Thank you. Well, in these regions where poverty is contiguous because of the natural conditions and the topography, poverty is indeed very serious. It is fair to say that we have uh, uh, well-established natural disaster response system. When natural disasters happen, people will pour in with their assistance. So. And the most important thing is to ensure the quality of poverty alleviation. To make sure that people will not relapse into poverty, it is important first to improve the local conditions on the one hand, and on the other hand, make sure that people can have access to public services. At the same time, we have to try to change the mindsets of the local people. And we have to look at the local conditions where uh, people have established stable sources of, sources of income. If so, they are well prepared to fight against natural disasters and restore the production and life and uh, make sure that the poverty alleviation results can be locked in. And in regions where people relapse into poverty, uh, actually poverty alleviation is not genuinely achieved. So we have to step up our assistance. We have to consolidate the results of poverty alleviation, locking the quality of poverty alleviation, and bringing the financial resources from both the provincial and local level improve uh, transfer uh, subsidies. Uh, for instance, in this year, we have increased 20 billion in uh, poverty relief funding, which will be mainly used in these extreme poverty areas. And in bold areas, ethnic minority regions, uh, greater support is being given to fight against poverty. Thank you. From the government level to the third level to the third level, in this year, we have increased the media and the media area. Our feeling is that the media is getting more and more. In this year, do you think the media is going to be more and more? What is the media area behind the media area? What is the media area behind the media area? Thank you. With the Xinhua News Agency, uh, I have a question on third-party evaluation. We have seen that the evaluation of poverty alleviation results have been, as is getting more and more strict. We had auditing at first and then third-party evaluation. Then we have the secret surveys by the media. So we have seen this trend going on. And my question is, will this trend continue uh, this year? And what is the significance of such strict moves for poverty alleviation? Thank you.
to conduct the most strict assessment system is one of the typical priorities of this time's poverty alleviation, and it's also the requirement from President Xi. So this time, the evaluation is not simply cited inspection from the Central Committee of the CPC. This time's assessment specially require the efficiency of the poverty alleviation from provincial level. And the, it's a very completed system. It's also strict. The requirements are strict. Just like you mentioned, we have uh, the cross-provincial uh, auditing and inspection, which includes uh, 22 provinces. They inspect each other and identify problems and also draw lessons from each other. This contributes to the work. And we also have the third party evaluation system. We have generated more than 1,000 experts and scholars, also doctors and uh, masters and professors have uh, been involved. And this year, we added uh, the secret visiting and also auditing on finance. This series of uh, inspection integrated with uh, the previous inspections and uh, assessment And currently, the assessment is a new policy, and we are gradually completing it. And to make it better developed, last year, during the assessment, we found some fraud and misconduct. This year, we just concluded a one site tour. We see the reduction on these problems. After a series of assessment, we still don't require the localities to submit a form which will add to their burden. We witness the sound and the steady assessment process. While mentioning the strict uh, assessment, especially how to utilize the results, this help promote the implementation and help improve the sense of responsibility. The assessment will examine the work and uh, whether it is targeted or not. And also, during the whole process, it will be supervised by this assessment. Last year, we assessed 22 provinces, among which 90 provinces got 90% satisfaction from the people. So we can see the acknowledgement and recognition from the people. And uh, the results of uh, the assessment also require the leaders from the provincial level and the central committee, because this will be the database. And uh, for the provinces who top the list, uh, we will report them and appraise them and also to give them awards. For the provinces who have problems, we will discuss with them. 
discuss with the leaders from the province this means the burden in some places the leaders from the county mentioned they are vow they vow to work hard to alleviate their poverty and we can see this time we really have a very strict assessment which contribute to this poverty alleviation and next we will continue to make it a strict uh, uh, With uh, Outlook China in Hong Kong, uh, we see that some people um, are slap, elapting to poverty because of illness. My question is what new measures will be taken this year to address this problem? Thank you. <coughs> Well, let me add a few words about oversight and evaluation. What Evaluation is an important part of implementation of the spirits of the 19th CPC uh, National Congress, which concerns the strict uh, discipline of the party. By doing so, we are acting in accordance with the requirements for the strict governance of the party and implement the relevant requirements across the board in fighting against poverty. Talking about illness-induced poverty, extreme poverty is caused by two uh, reasons. One is the fact that in those extreme poverty prefectures, counties, and villages, uh, poverty uh, situation is very serious. Secondly, uh, illness-induced poverty. Well, pov uh, illness-induced poverty is a global issue, not only in developing countries, but also in developed countries. Uh, developed countries have uh, spent a lot of uh, efforts in addressing this problem, in registering these poor people, over 40 percent of them are uh, in poverty because of illness. So since the launch of the register for these poor people, the figure has remained stable. So this is a very important part of our work. So given the available medical uh, resources and policies. Uh, we will utilize medical insurance and other channels to help these people suffering from illness and poverty. And the National Family Planning and Reform Commission is also working on this particular front. And most of the illnesses are curable. For chronic illness, the village health centers and clinics will help address the uh, illnesses and problems, for instance, uh, flu and coughing. For major uh, illness, Uh, relevant policies are also put into place. Last year, important investments have been made for major consequential illnesses. 
we have provided treatment to over 4.2 million people. For those uh, who are included in the register of the poverty uh, data bank, the medical uh, reimbursement threshold has also been uh, raised. Over 80 percent of the um, expenses would be reimbursed. The medical reimbursement ratio has been raised above 20 percent. Last year, on the illness-induced poverty front, many financial resources have been uh, put into place, including private funding, fiscal uh, budget, and a lot of other resources. Uh, moving forward, we will continue to improve the system of medical assistance to prevent uh, major illnesses and help shape behaviors and uh, lifestyles. Thank you. With Economic Daily, we all know that uh, poverty alleviation through financial development is part and parcel to the whole uh, poverty alleviation uh, strategy. And my question is, what are the existing bottlenecks and short planks uh, in this field? And will there be specific plans this year for strengthening the role of poverty alleviation through financial development? And how can the financial institutions play a better role in this field? Thank you. In the villages, it's difficult for the farmers to receive loans, and the serv financial services they enjoyed are very few. So there are a large space for the financial institutions to play a role. These are traditional problems, and since the battle against uh, the poverty alleviation, We conducted the poverty alleviation through financial development, and this has ushering a new stage. And it's also the highlights of the poverty alleviation. In the past, we mainly used the central fund, and now we have capital from the society. There were three products uh, from this process. The first, the registered uh, impoverished household during their business, they can lend loans with the lower interest. And uh, there were other favorable mechanisms and systems for the loan. Last year, through after three years' efforts, since uh, 2014, we've uh, released uh, 430 billion yuan for the over 11 million registered impoverished households. So there are about 33% uh, of the registered households have enjoyed uh, these uh, favorable loans. And second, the Bank of the People 
also initiated reciprocity fund and a loan to drive uh, the process of uh, poverty alleviation. In terms of the projects, for people to apply for it, and uh, it's totaled uh, 160 billion yuan. And uh, for the guarantee and the mortgage, there are also favorable conditions to the impoverished people. And just now, we also mentioned relocation. The fiscal revenue uh, invested uh, 250 billion RMB, and uh, the National Development Bank and the Rural Development uh, Bank issued uh, over 350 billion yuan in order to support the government. But this money from the banks should be returned. So we should also prevent the risks for this um, small amount of uh, loan. The requirement is to make a living, but not for life. And we will continue exploring in order to standardize this uh, uh, loan process, in order also to prevent uh, the financial risks and uh, bad uh, debt. Next, uh, the financial institutions will continue pl to play its role. We will continue to uphold the spirit from the Central Committee of the CPC and prevent risks, especially for those uh, uh, who are disguised to uh, engage in this process. We will reverse the situation and we will supervise them. Tong 那么就是说在我们认为呢采访和调查当中跟我们谈一谈谢谢抱一下你的眉笔哦我是那个美国全美电视台啊谢谢我们是在同一时间去年的同一地点啊上腾的两位人提了相同的问题对对没错但是今天有点变化有点时间啊是挺好好 year today I raised a question on ecology based poverty alleviation and throughout the year we have seen some good practices for example we had a forum on finding ways to preserve ecology in poor areas but we also see that there is still a gap between what's on the ground and our expectations and uh, the balance between uh, addressing the cause and addressing the symptoms. For example, ecology-based poverty alleviation is actually targeting addressing the root causes of poverty. But if you use cash, it will be faster to see results. So how can we strike a balance between immediate interests and long-term interests? 
Uh, through our interviews and surveys in the past year on ecology-based poverty alleviation, we also find a conflict between, between the preservation of the ecological environment and the utility of uh, natural resources and local resources. Because if you want to preserve uh, the ecology, sometimes you have to close down or remove some water dams and mining and mines, which cause an actual impediment to poverty alleviation. So what's your comment on this uh, conflict? Thank you. Well, the in the places you mentioned. Uh, there are heavily polluting projects such as mines, and these mines have to be shut down. To be honest, shutting down these mines will not be detrimental to the poverty alleviation efforts because the benefits of the mines are not being shared by the local people, especially those poor people. And they will suffer from the consequences of these mines. So I totally agree that these mines and polluting projects have to be uh, shut down. That's why we call it ecologic um, poverty alleviation or ecology-based poverty alleviation. So on the one hand, we have to complete the poverty alleviation drive and we also have to think about the sustainability of our poverty alleviation because we talk about the integrated development of economic, social, environmental and um, other areas of our development. And the local environment is very hospitable to the local people and the environment is very fragile and being destroyed. And the uh, Grain for green and drive is also a part of our poverty alleviation uh, process. And the forest keepers uh, are those people who are registered impoverished people, and there are over a hundred thousand people doing this kind of uh, uh, forest keeping work. In Shanxi province, Every year, a significant part of the uh, poverty alleviation uh, funding is being used for uh, the uh, forestation in the local area. It's like you are fighting two uh, wars on the same battlefield, that is poverty alleviation and ecological protection. So this practice is being um, replicated across the country and important achievements have been made. So generally speaking, poverty alleviation and ecological protection are not at odds with each other. And this is part and parcel of our integrated development. And we will continue to be committed to this strategy. Thank you. Uh, with China-Russia headline, uh, the, both China and Russia attach great importance to poverty alleviation and reduction. Uh, do you think that border cooperation between our two countries will help poverty alleviation in the border areas of our, of our countries? Thank you.
This is a good question. China and Russia are neighbors and uh, friends, and both of us are great nations in the world. The friendship between our two boards is uh, the welfare of both peoples. We hope to see the mutual development of both sides in order to add to the income of both peoples at the border areas and also to offer equal uh, trading and business. I heard that uh, the business uh, at the border areas are doing great and help alleviate uh, poverty for both peoples and also the stability between the borders also help improve people's lives and uh, help people make money. Stability are different from the wars. The people are leading happy life there. I'm happy with this. And your question is good also because uh, President Xi initiated the Belt and Road Initiative. is also in accordance with the, this. President Xi also initiated a common prospect to build a shared future for mankind. That's my answer. Thank you. Due to time limits, that's the end of today's press conference. Let's appreciate it, Director Liu, and thank you, friends from media.